Castro and you're watching Leaders with a Mission. And today I have someone who's so amazing, she's a ball of energy and she's so cool. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Gio and she is a performance and wellness coach for high impact individuals. Her story is powerful and is so needed in the world right now. So with you, this amazing ball of fire, my friend Gio. Hey Gio, love, how are you? Hi! <laughs> so excited, thank you. <laughs> I told everyone you're a ball of fire and that's exactly um, what we need right now. We need energy and we need high uh, vibration and we just need to be igniting everyone to, to connect to themselves. So I know the one reason why I wanted to invite you to this conversation is, is because I know your story is so powerful. Like, I feel like anyone that has been in corporate America can totally relate, especially in this really uncertain times. And, um, and, and I want you to share it. So can you please tell us a little bit about your whole story and then we'll take it from there. Absolutely. So I'll start by saying that right now, all of us are going through a period of loss. And that word loss is really where my story comes from. And through that loss, what's happened is we will, let's say, I have a lot of feelings, a lot of things coming up that are unlike how we're used to um, acting and being. And so it's confusing us, it's frustrating you, things like that. So going back to my story is that I worked for a corporate company for 16 years, had my dream job, and due to the environment that I was in, Ultimately, I ended up losing my job. And in losing my job, I lost my identity. I lost everything that I knew, my routines, the way of being. And I really had to focus on how do I come back from that? And what is it that I now have the opportunity to do and to really identify and align with my purpose? So really, my story is about loss in the corporate world environment that in learning that I was so identified with that, that when that was stripped from me, I didn't know what to do with myself. And, and I have to add that it's not just a corporate company. Like this is one of the top five fortune, I don't know, 500 companies. <laughs> so this is like a top and she was a high level executive. Am I mistaken or like? That's correct. I ran all of Latin America and the Caribbean. And I was the nucleus to one of our global customers. So yes, it was very exciting. It was fast paced. It hit on all of my strengths. I learned every day. So I was in an optimal position of where I thought I was going to be for a long time. And then all of a sudden you just, did you get fired or did you fire the company? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So I do have to be transparent, very open and honest that I had an unhealthy relationship with a female manager that caused my environment to turn upside down, which ultimately interfered with my performance. And therefore they um, asked what I wanted to do, whether I had an opportunity to leave now or um, basically get on a performance plan which I chose to leave because I knew that I just didn't have it in me to continue fighting and staying in that. So I chose to leave. Okay. So like, I don't know, but when I tell my story, <laughs> well, like, <laughs> I like to say that I fired my company. I, I wasn't, I wasn't let go or anything like that. I was just like, I was so, when I was in corporate, I felt so like I was drowning that I had, I was like, if I continue here, I'm going to die. And I'm sure like you had, you had that choice. You had to say, okay, I could, I could stay and go to another level or like move. Um, but for me, I was just, I felt like I was suffocating. I felt like I was dying inside and I, I just had to say sayonara. So in, in one way or another, you, you got to say sayonara. Um, yeah. As well, but so then, okay, you, you left corporate. And now what, what was that like? What did I feel like? What were your dark valleys and what mistakes did you make that you would like people not to make right now? Okay. So the big thing that stuck out right now is mistake. Abort, abort, danger, get out of here. 
And that is that it's the identity. I had my identity tied to what I did, to my job. And so when that went away, I had no idea who I was and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't happy. I couldn't figure out why did, why did I couldn't figure out what it is I wanted to do. Um, so it was as if I didn't know myself. I didn't recognize myself because in retrospect, I look back and yes, in our work environment, there are communities that are created for us and we like to belong to these communities. But because I was with them for so long and went through so many milestones with them, ultimately they became part of my identity. And so it was as if a part of me died. And so the biggest lesson and mistake that I made is that I tied all of my successes and milestones with the company with my job and therefore it identified who I was. So without it, I had no idea who I was. You lost yourself. And then, but, but listen to this. It's funny that you say that. It's, it's just making me connect to when I, when I said sayonara to my corporate, my corporate job at that time. Um, I remember that um, I knew that I wanted it to be out and I started, um, that's how for productions was born. I was like, I was like, if I go back to my other options, like there's just very few options. If I go out, I know that when they ask me, Oh, so where do you see yourself in five years in the interview? I was going to be like, um, not here. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't bear like going through the interview and knowing who I am. I am one of those people that I will say the truth, even if, I know sometimes people don't want to hear it. And sometimes I say it too bluntly that people might think that I'm being unreasonable, but I'm just, I'm just being honest. So I was mm -hmm. like, I don't think I should be going to an interview because I'm going to like shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> so when I, when I actually started doing for, um, for productions, I, I remember that I started going to networking events and I, my normal me, I'm a very social butterfly. I love people. I, I love interacting with others. And I went to like the networking events and it was like, cricket, cricket, who the hell I am? Like, I was not as much as you, but I still like being in corporate made me lose a part of me. And I remember coming home to my husband and saying, oh my God, I feel like part of me died. Like, I, I'm, I know who I am and I'm going to this event but I have like, I, it's like my skill to be other than what I was before has been like shot. Like, mm -hmm. how did, can you tell me like things that happened to you that you were like, where the hell did I go? One of the things is that I went on countless interviews for a job and I reached deep into my network with the amount of experience that I had, as well as my not only background, but my willingness to decrease the amount of money that I used to make, I got not one job offer, zero. I looked for over a year and I was sitting back going, I don't understand this. Why? What's happening? And it's a little bit of what you talked about. I was portraying in front of these interviews that I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. And I was just going through the motions of saying, yes, uh, I want this job because that is what we're supposed to do, supposed to say. And so one of, and I think about, and I translate that now into what's happening during this time of uncertainty is that with us being taken off of our routines and being in a different environment, we're finding that we're like, who are we? What are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to act? What do I like? And that is a clear indication that your identity is tied to what you do, not who you really are. So it was about not getting a job and I couldn't figure out why. And that was because I was not presenting myself as to who I really am and asking for what I really wanted. I was just going through the motions in what I was supposed to do. And that's so sad. It just reminded me, you were saying that, you know how my brain, it's always like making stories, like, like making visuals out of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound very silly, but I totally saw like we are, the world is now attached to the matrix and the coronavirus just like jumped you off the matrix and you're like kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. going and kind of like figuring out 
what what do you mean I was attached? Like, who the hell am I? Um, wh why am I doing here? What is, is, is this like, I don't, I obviously there is uncertainty. Obviously there is all this buzz and noise and all this stuff, but to me it's more like, it is such an opportunity if we, and I was just having this conversation with someone today. It's not what this, why is this happening to me? It's, it is more, why is this happening for me? And what do I need to learn? What is it that I need to learn? And who do I have to be? Because as you were saying that, it just dawned on me that that kind of lifestyle, when you give your life for a corporation, you give, you give your life for a corporation mm -hmm. you lose part of yourself you invested outside and you were living for the outside you were only nurturing the outside you were never nurturing the inside and i think that that's that's kind of like what you the kind of missing puzzle that you put into the thing because you eventually figure it out what was your how did you eventually kind of like grounded yourself and found yeah. Maybe if this is not working is because I, I think, I think I, I need something for me. How was that for you? Yeah. So the first thing was number one, which I think what we are all guilty of and it's completely natural. And that is we all operate from an ego perspective because we're competitive. We want certain things for ourselves. So it was putting that aside. But as you put that aside, the biggest thing was to be okay and admit with the fact of how you were feeling at that moment. Because when we are used to operating at high speeds and performing and doing well and kicking ass, um, we don't want anything to get in our way of slowing that process down. And so when you experience a loss, what happens is, is there are the emotions that come up with that. It could be you're angry, you're overwhelmed, you're depressed, you're sad, whatever it is. So the one key thing that helped me start this process was to stop and admit, how are you feeling? And it's okay to feel this way. And because you feel this way does not make you weak or lessens what you are going to do and how you're going to do it. That is the biggest thing. And once you do that, it's almost like you can breathe again because you know who you really are in that you would never let yourself sit in that state and not perform. So then what happens is, is you admit it, you allow it to flow through you. And then all of a sudden it's like, you feel better. Like you feel like a, oh, I can breathe. And then through that breath, you gain clarity, which then allows you to come up with your new action plan. Oh, that's so beautiful. What I heard in translation was give yourself permission to feel. Mm -hmm. And the second part is, please be compassionate with yourself please and i feel like um we both are like women attractors it's not so much that we work with men which we do but for the most part if we would have to divide our audience it's mostly women and i would say that i find that this portion of being compassionate to yourself it's a lot more harder for women than it is for men. Men are more like, you know, like they're trained to like go and play football and get like all roughed up and they're just like, oh, okay, it's a bruise. I can handle it. While women are more like, oh. for women it's so much harder to look at themselves and to say, it is okay to feel bad. It is okay to cry. You are going to feel this but you're going to be kind to yourself, mm -hmm. be nice to yourself. Because what it, it came clear to me through like working with all these women is that there's, this, there's a little voice in them that is really, really mean. Um, I've, I have, I think everyone has a level of that voice, but my little voice is more, more of like a warrior voice. I don't, I don't have a little voice that is mean. And when she's come up, she's come forward I've mm -hmm. her, but like, I've been like, if you don't have anything nice to say, shut the hell up and get out of my way. Yeah. So she's learned that I am a bully to her more than she's a bully to me like that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I want women to connect with that because I think that that's one of your special sauces. Like you're this igniter of passion and with that passion, you also give compassion and it's just a good mixture of like a 
performance coach, which does such a good definition to who you are and what you do. Um, but with all of it, with strategy and with human humanity and connection, and is this really good female energy with with male energy that you kind of combine in yeah. one? So how yeah. did you, how did you actually like discover that upon yourself? What was that aha moment? When did that happen? So not that I want to get technical, but it was with someone pointing out to me that we live our lives in two energies, in our male energy and our feminine energy. And that is not gender related. It's just that the way that our world and society has us running today, it has us out of our male energy, which is the doer, the executing, the result oriented, um, the having to be the mom, getting things done. And because this world now pushes us into that energy, we forget about our feminine energy. Essence. Yes, which is the feeling, the sensing, the compassionate side. And so when that was brought to my attention, I said, that makes sense because I don't allow myself to be upset and cry because I tell myself, you know better than this, get up, you know, start doing it. So it was starting to become open that I do get to sit in that sensing energy to allow myself to feel and then conquer what was one of my biggest challenges is to be more vulnerable and that it's okay to do that. And if you can find that balance between both of them, now you get to become this bad ass, get it all done woman, you know, <laughs> that for me was the biggest aha learning that there is a balancing between two different energies that you do get to manage within yourself. And, and to get connected to your essence. I think that because we feel like we're supposed to do something or we're called, like we have to have to have to, we disconnect to, to what makes us smile, what makes us happy, what makes us feel, what, what gives us energy, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of like our sanctuary. Like if I were, if I were to put it in, into like, I don't know how, what terms, but it's like God gave each of us like a, a meter of what brings us joy. And that's mm -hmm. kind of like, that's, that's the state of mind where your body is able to fight infections better because your immune system gets better, where you, you get like the high of, of the good, good hormone feel like that is, that is the good state of mind. You're supposed to be vibing in that. It's not supposed to be there forever. Like you're not supposed to be, mm -hmm. you know, like life is not like a pinky pie-ish going, you know, like feel, but it is in the balance of those things. Like it is in the balance of the ups and downs, but having good rhythm, you know, like the line of life when you're alive, yeah. it's like, <laughs> you yeah. have to be riding that roller coaster yeah. in that rhythm. There's like really good. And then you're like, oh, shucks. Yeah. Um, but what have you learned now that you're an entrepreneur? Did the world end? Like, what, what, how did that happen? Because you came from being in corporate America, feeling that you belonged there. That was the whole your identity. That's where you belonged. Um, how did you reinvent it yourself to become yeah. this force of good that now trains corporate, corporate um, banks and corporate locations and give people the right tools so they can, like, kill it and shine and just... Go the distance. Tell me. So you said it, right? It began with understanding who I was and that it wasn't tied to what I did. That's the biggest, biggest thing. Then it's under, coming to the um, understanding that we get to be compassionate with ourselves and we get to feel however we're feeling, that it is okay. We're not weak, that, you know, it's not ego. So being compassionate. And then what got me completely out of it is action. Once I gained clarity, I got into action. And one of the actions that I put into play was creating my support system where I could ask for help, get different perspectives, and be able to get things done because we cannot do it alone. And you cannot think that way. And I will give you a perfect example of one of the exercises that I did today with my corporate bank. I said, everyone take their finger and put it on their nose. Now, when you do that, look down. Can you see the tip of your finger? No, you can't, can you? Why? Because it's too close to you. And what that means is that our experiences, our environment, what we live every day is too close to us to be able to see it. So we need to gain 
perspective from somebody else, from a support system for help to help you see the opportunities and the options. That was my biggest action that I put into place that has helped elevate me and what I call busting out of the Friday night light football sign. You remember like all the cheerleaders, the players coming out? That was the biggest thing that I put into play and I still have in place as my foundation. And from there, it's whatever, whatever action I go into and focus for that month. But that was my biggest thing is the support system because you cannot see it when you're in that close to that situation. Yeah, one of, uh, one of the ways another um, mentor says it is like, you cannot see the label, the jar you're in. So if you're in a jar, there's a label on it. Like you cannot read what that, that, that jar reads. So you need someone else from the outside to tell you what, what that is. So yeah. um, I'm just super glad that you were able to find kind of like your gift. Mm-hmm. I, I, and, and again, this comes from someone else that always says, sometimes you get hand out gifts just in a very ugly, ugly wrapping mm-hmm. paper. So, you know, it doesn't matter. There's a gift inside, you know, get the, yeah. get the paper out of it and just enjoy your gift. Cause yeah. for you staying in corporate, if you would have stayed there, what would your future be like now? My light would not be shining as bright as it is today because just my, what I could accomplish and do and who I could be had a ceiling in that corporate company. And now I can say that being through that experience. So I would not be shining and operating 100% into the power that I know that I have. So what would you say to someone who maybe just got a laid off of a job that they've had forever and uh, their identity is tied to it? What would be that message for that one person? What, what would you tell them? That it is survivable. You're not going to die. You, your natural instincts are going to kick in, but you need to heal. Heal first, acknowledge what you're feeling, allow yourself to feel that. And then after that, everything's just going to fall into place. I love that because that is just hope. They need to, yeah. people sometimes, they don't understand it. Like we, sometimes when we're in pain, we only see ourselves. We only see me, 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 me. It is when we, when we break from me and we see that everyone around us is in a collective state of pain or in a collective state of, we don't know what's going to happen or we, it gives us perspective to make different decisions. And um, I feel like for a lot of, for a lot of people, not only for the people who have lost a job, maybe there have been good leaders that have had to let go of really amazing employees because they couldn't, right? Uh, they couldn't hold them. Everybody is experiencing loss right now. Everybody is experiencing, and, and for some, some degree to another, like some people are losing family members. Some people are losing their life as, as they knew it. Some, pap- some people are taking really big hits, um, lowering their income. Like whatever it is, we're all going through this. And it is only by, by supporting each other that we're going to survive. It's not, this is not the time to start punching people and like bringing people down. Um, and if we can awaken that consciousness level from the people around us, if we can be like, this is the part that when I decided to create this specific series, because I'm telling you, I did not have this in mind. This is all like, this is, this is all came from divine intervention that I felt I was called to, um, take responsibility on what could I do to make the world better? And what do I have? my superpower is video my superpower is having access to badass people that are change makers that's that's that, those are my those are my big guns at my disposal this is like you know yes. I mean? so how do how do we magnify the voice of hope and love and encouragement and and let's do this together because if we we, we, the world cannot afford to lose everyone that is, is in pain right now. And, yeah. and all of us, I think that I was talking to my husband the other day and it was like, for those, who, for those of us who have been entrepreneurs for a while or who have tested the wires, waters of entrepreneurship, I think 
the one muscle that we have um, had to flex a lot is uncertainty, right? Like we've had to flex, is that client gonna hire us? Is, am I gonna get that check? Are they gonna pay me on time? Because we have dealt with uncertainty as, as a muscle, if we put it you know, in that way, this moment doesn't feel that uncertain. It just feels like, yeah, it's not normal. It's not, we don't know, but it ain't gonna take me down. So it's how do we infect people with that same energy, right? Absolutely. So my superpower <laughs> is optimism. I love it. That's, that's part of my essence. That's part of my makeup. And the biggest thing, and I know that optimism sometimes is not welcomed in a time that you can't see yourself out of it. So my biggest thing is being able to shut down those thoughts that are in the future, because that's what causes anxiety and fear. And that's what paralyzes you from acting and then really creating your big vision. So think about what is it that I'm going to take an opportunity right now, advantage of this, and what do I see myself in 90 days? So as we know, we shared a business coach before, and she invited us to write a letter to ourselves 90 days from now, so 60 or 90 days from now, and really using the guardrails as what did you learn what did you create? What did you have gratitude for? Um, and what is it that you accomplished? So start putting your, your mindset around manifesting and mentally rehearsing where you're going to be in 90 days and what that big vision looks like for you. Because someone like me with power of optimism, sometimes people don't want to hear that. But if you break it down and say, hey, we're all going to survive this. It's going to be okay. Don't let that loop in your head stay and talk to you negatively for what's in the future and you can't control. Get into action now and the things that you can control to work towards what that big vision is 90 days from now. Just little building blocks. That's it. So that is my optimism to you. I love it. It's like little brickets of little bricks that build a, a whole building. It's not one step at a time i'm breathing one step at a time yeah. i'm breathing just take it easy okay thank you so much Gio. this was so you're much welcome. fun thank you for bringing your your wisdom because you're thank wise you. you're so wise that's, that's another of your big superpowers bring wisdom and perspective and um and your energy is contagious. Like I, I'm reading my body language and I'm like jumping in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, and my last line that I tell myself every day and that I think everyone should tell themselves and you've heard it is how dare I not, how dare I not share what I, what I've used and what I know can help others. So I was happy to contribute. Hopefully you walk away with a nugget or you had an aha and you can get out there in action and be like, I'm ready. Let's do this. I love it. And I, there's something that came out when you were saying that, and it was something like when you feel like you have nothing, you really have nothing to lose. So mm. go and kick butt and try because right now all of the like rules are being broken there. Mm. This is just a shift in energy that is allowing us to reinvent and recreate and reformat ourselves. You know, like when you, sometimes when the computer's not working and you unplug it, well, this is our unplug. <laughs> this moment in time is unplugging the whole world Yeah. because we need a restart. Yeah. And it is about to us, those that are, here to make a difference those who have been wanting to do x but they haven't been able to because you know mm -hmm. my work didn't let me or I, I didn't have the time or you know insert excuse right there yeah. um it is our chance to to change to to give your give ourselves a chance to do what we love and to when you have nothing to lose hey you just, you just kick ass. Like there's no, there's no more going down. All you got is up. So for those people who might not know you, where can they find you, Gio? Where can we see you? Please share with the world. Well, it's pretty easy. So you can find me at Instagram at Gio Balance. So that's G-I-O Balance. 
or just head to my website, geobalance.com. Thank you. <laughs> and for all of you, for everyone who has a message to share, for everyone who has a little light to give to the world right now, please, for the love of God, use the power of video to magnify your voice, to reach those that are looking for an answer, because right now the world needs us. So please, if you have no idea how to do it, if you have any questions, head over to my website, forproductions.com, where if you subscribe, you will always receive nuggets of awesomeness with cool features and cool tools that you can use to magnify your voice with the power of video. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>